I saw this politics in Africa course and it looked interesting, taught by a guy named Phil Ressler. August 30th, 2012, I stepped into his class and I was immediately captivated. We watched a film called Pray the Devil Back to Hell and it, it really spoke to me and for me it was like how have I grown up in this country in the United States whose history is so complexly intertwined with another country, Liberia, and yet I know nothing about it. I'd come to do an internship in the U.S. Embassy Monrovia to do honors thesis research in the fishing communities, and then I was preparing for my final season of college soccer at William & Mary. I was playing these random pickup games every Saturday morning at 7 a.m., and on the third one, I met the guy who would become my co-founder of Monrovia Football Academy, Sekou de Georges Manuba. We met on one Saturday morning, doing a pickup game. And then, yeah, we become friends. We started talking, and, and then I told him, like, do you mind having a game with His Majesty, the King of Football in Africa, who is the president right now, President George Weah. I was suddenly integrated into this network of Liberian footballers. Every week, I'd come back and play with them. And at the time, President Weah was the peace ambassador in Liberia. And he decided to hold this Liberian peace and reconciliation match. The whole concept, let's use football to promote peace within our country 10 years on after the end of the war. So he invites legends from across the African continent. President Oya, out of nowhere, says to me, you know, we'd like you to play as well. Which I tell everyone I think was an act of diplomacy more than anything. <laughs> but I wasn't going to say no. And it really shows me the transformative potential of football in the country. The passion and energy people have for it. The way that young people rally around it. And then, right before I left, at the end of my, my third month, a statistic came out that always really shocks people, which was 25,000 high school graduates had taken the University of Liberia's entrance exam, and every single one of them had failed it. So, you know, President Sirleaf went on air and admitted the education system's a mess, it made international news, and I left in the midst of that turmoil. I returned to sunny Williamsburg for my senior year, you know, with a vastly different perspective on the experience I was having at William Mary, and captivated by the experience that I'd had. I sort of had these three key takeaways, the transformative potential of soccer, the family education system, and then gender inequality. One never sees girls playing soccer here. Most of the time, girls are meant to play uh, kickball and boys are meant to play football. To the extent that the sport is referred to, football is referred to as man ball in a lot of communities. It's gendered by name. But I was a kid who'd been studying this stuff for less than a year. I really didn't know enough to do anything with that. So fast forward a year, I arrive in Oxford. I've, I've graduated from William & Mary. The, the following fall, I go right to Oxford to do my master's in African studies. And this is the fall of 2014. It's the height of the Ebola crisis. And Liberia is the country that's most heavily impacted. And so now I'm sitting across the table from this guy who's like my idol, this scholar, Johnny Steinberg. And we're talking about how uniquely positioned I am. How just through this crazy turn of events, I'm probably the only person outside of Liberia with this network of Liberian footballers. And in the aftermath of the crisis, there will be an opportunity to contribute to the rebuilding process. What could we do? And we thought, well, what about a football academy? What if we use this passion and energy around football as an incentive for kids to improve in the classroom, to break down gender barriers, and to empower Liberia's future leaders? And so I reached out to Georgie, who had become my closest friend here in Liberia through all these experiences of playing soccer together. And I said, what do you think of this? And he said, let's do it. We started thinking about so many things. How can we create a football academy? How can we like, be a help to the society in Liberia? After we, we've seen people being so eager for the game, and there have been a lot of struggles with African players and education, we thought it necessary to like, bring football, bring the passion around football encourage the kid, motivate them to play football and go to school because at the end of the day, this career might be shot and you will need to have a life after football. If you're a doctor after football, you say I'm alive. I still remember we're like riding around in cars trying to make this thing happen. And that's, it's pretty special actually because you genuinely believe you're gonna, you're gonna get to a place where the thing starts to become sustainable and it starts to grow, but you never really know. And I think if we could see where we are today, if we could go back to that moment and know that we would be here, we might not believe it actually. These sorts of experiences are transformational for kids all over the world. And so I think that's a pretty special thing for us.
MFA is the first football academy that has opened in Liberia in 2015 that, is, that are combining quality education and professional football development, leadership training, gender equality, and life skills. Why do you think? To be honest, our academic system in Africa, especially in Liberia, has been so challenging. One of our female student at our previous school in West Point, it's more like a market ground. But they had to go there because that, that's the only means. And they're not learning anything. Sometimes the teacher doesn't come to school at all. Now she's in this school that is providing this great education with great teachers and a great environment that she comes, she's motivated to come to school. And now it's a huge challenge in the classroom. She's becoming one of the top students. In terms of what are our pathways for our kids, you know, there are a couple who could eventually play professional football, but there are others who could eventually go to a prep school and university in the US. But still there are others who could go to a tech hub in Accra or Nairobi or go to the top universities here and start their own business and employ 10, 20 people and impact all of those families. That's a leader in your community. That's real success. That's real transformation at a societal level. There are all kinds of really, really bright and talented people across Liberia. My entire intention is let's create an environment where those people can come in and thrive and create new opportunities for their own children. It's about changing the way that this sort of work is done by someone like me, who comes from a relatively privileged background, trying to change the way that this work is done so that it's more about local collaboration, more about local solution. And let's create something that's actually sustainable and everlasting and is Liberian. And so I think for students at William Mary, they should recognize that they have this incredible opportunity in front of them, that the university opens them up to the entire world in ways that they probably can't see yet. This is a story of, it, there's nothing extraordinary about it. It's one thing leads to the next, and a lot of it is about luck. A part of it is about just like curiosity, wondering what's next and being willing to take that step. But most of it really is just things happening in succession that you could have never predicted. Again, it all starts with me walking into that classroom where Professor Ressler is standing at the front. 